Thanks for joining us today here at Autodesk Technology Centre in Birmingham. My name is Mark Miller Schiff. I'm a tool room specialist here in Birmingham. I'm joined today by Keenan Gill, who is a technical consultant. We've got a really interesting part today. Um, this is a traditional mould tool, and these are produced one-off. Um, and then they're used in injection molding to create masses of parts. Um, and this is exactly what this part is. This is a mud guard for a motorcycle. Now traditionally this is machined as a one-off as I said, um, but it's also machined out of a, a very hard material, a, uh, a tool steel material. Th there's a number of sort of key bits of geometry on this model or on this part today. Um, so we've got some sort of freeform surfaces. We've also got some complicated or complex um, geometries on the inside of the pocket. How would you traditionally go about machining this, this part? Right, so after completing all the roughing and rest roughing stages on the job, I would then look to finish the steeper regions using a contour strategy. Contour is very good from anything from 30 degrees up to 90 degrees. Right. It gives you a constant step down, giving a real nice service finish. Okay. I would then machine the flatter regions we'll have a choice of either a scallop machining or parallel machining. Oh, yeah. And that will give us a nice even finish all the way across the, the flat areas. Okay. This is actually a really good point. Fusion 360 has just introduced a brand new tool part called Steep and Shallow. And what this does is automatically identify the steeper areas of the part, as you've just mentioned, but also focuses on the shallower regions and then optimizes those individual regions of the tool part and combines that into a single tool part. Right, so I can now calculate just one tool path to machine the mould instead of two. Absolutely. With the new Steep and Shallow strategy, there's a lot of benefits to using the strategy that you may not be aware of. But sort of the main benefit of this is that we get an improved machining time, but we also get an improved surface finishing as part of that tool path. So let me explain some of those benefits. Benefit one, continuous spiral for an improved surface finish. When using the scallop option on shallow areas, the new steep and shallow strategy has the option to use continuous spiral. Now what this means is that the tool does not have to perform a step over between passes across shallower regions. Now this has the obvious benefit of reducing the cycle time, but the biggest notable benefit here is that with no steps between passes, we get a overall better surface finish, but also notice that there are no more linking passes when using the continuous option. Benefit two, corner smoothing and automatic cusp removal. Notice on screen the sharp corners in this particular toolpath segment. Now when the machine tool sees the sharp corner coming up in the toolpath, it will automatically try to reduce the programmed feed rate. And this allows the cutting tool to change direction as it enters that particular sharp corner. Now this does two things. Firstly, when the feed rate slows down, the cutting tool stops deflecting. And this can ultimately result in a small dwell mark being made on the part. Secondly, when the machine tool automatically reduces that same feed rate, the machining cycle time also increases. By eliminating all of those sharp corners from the tool path, we can make the machining cycle time faster and it improves the overall surface finish. Now it's particularly important at this point to note that the new steep and shallow tool path has a centerline trace as its final cutting action. The centerline cut passes all over the small apexes to remove the tiny cups of material where the cutting tool smoothly changed its direction on the scallop toolpath. Generally, this is just a nicer toolpath with a faster cycle time, resulting in a better quality surface finish. Benefit three, constant overlap between steep and shallow regions. Okay, so users of the new steep and shallow toolpath strategy can now enter an overlap value. Without this overlap value, the tool paths for the steep regions and the tool paths for those shallower regions step over at the same edge. And this can result in dwell marks appearing on the surface finish of the machine component. 
entering an overlap value will result in the toolpath for those steeper regions and the toolpath for those shallower regions overlapping by a user-defined amount. By adding an overlap between the adjoining areas of the steep and shallow toolpath, we ultimately improve the surface finish by slightly overlapping the edges of the toolpaths. By doing this, we extend the edges of the toolpath segments so that they step over in different locations, ultimately minimizing the dwell marks. Benefit four, wall clearance with parallel. When machining shallow areas, one can also use the parallel strategy for shallow areas instead of the scallop toolpath. You can see that as we machine the bottom of this deep pocket, at the end of each parallel pass, the tool is going to approach the side wall of the pocket. This new steep and shallow toolpath strategy leaves the parallel passes slightly short of the steep wall and so as to avoid the tool touching the wall of the pocket. The, the amount of gap left is controlled by the user and is user defined and it avoids the cutting tool touching these steep pocket walls which would otherwise cause marks to form on the steep faces of the pocket. Now we often refer to these marks on the side wall as being Pekka tracks. Using this pullback value will result ultimately in a better surface finish, especially on the steep faces of the part. Benefit five, automatic parallel angle. The new steep and shallow toolbar strategy allows the user to select an auto angle option, which will change the way the shallow regions of the tool path are calculated. When the auto angle option is activated, the optimum parallel toolpath angle is automatically calculated by Fusion 360 for each of those individual shallow regions of the toolpath. So you can now see in the toolpath that each shallow region has a different parallel angle. The angle for each of these regions is automatically calculated to minimize the toolpath length, resulting in a faster and more efficient machining toolpath. Okay, great. So, should we get set up and do some machining? Absolutely, let's do it. Okay, so we've now done all the roofing and the rest roofing on the job. Should we now go and see how much material we have left on the part? Absolutely. One of the brand new features that um, Fusion 360 introduced is the ability to do on-machine probing. And that's using what we call the surface inspection toolpath or strategy. Now, that strategy has got two functions. One is to make sure that we can interrogate the part as part of an in-process exercise. Okay. So before we get to the end of the job, we want to know how much material is left on so we can make accurate decisions about the part as a downstream process. The second of those is determining the accuracy of the part as a post-manufacturing exercise. And so once it's all finished, we want to know if we've actually met the design requirements or the design intent. So is it manufactured accurately? Is it within tolerances? And obviously, has it met the drawing specifications? So there's that twofold process within the inspection. Now, for some of our customers who do want to use this bit of functionality, they are going to have to edit their post processor. And they can speak to the local representative to help them make that happen. So for those of you out there, make sure you get in contact with your representative to make sure you get your post edited and sorted before using the inspection uh, strategies within Fusion 360. Sounds good. Be interested to see the results we have. Absolutely. Let's get this inspected. Great. So how much material do we have left on our part? Yeah, great question. So what we need to do is we need to get the result off the controller and onto the PC. What we do then is we let Fusion 360 interrogate those results and show us some deviations. Now those deviations are calculated with the measured values compared against the CAD values. 
and we can see some of those deviations on screen in the form of X and Y deviations. We can also determine from those deviations how much material is left on the part. Now I know we added some material to leave on the part, i.e. some stock left on the part, um, and this is evident in the results because we can actually see now how much material is left on the part. Okay. Can you tell me why we have some positive material left on the par, Mark? It can be, if the tool radius is bigger than the actual radius on the model, it may show up as extra material showing up on your parts. Okay, I'm with you. Yeah. Or, on a semi-finishing process, you may have some big cuspites. If you probe on the top of a cuspite, it may show there's extra material left on the part. Whereas probing at the bottom of that cusp means that it'll appear like there's less material on. Correct. With you. Great. Okay, so I'm quite happy with what we've seen. It's looking good in terms of having material still on there. Shall we go ahead and machine this in its finished state? Yeah, let's get it on the machine. So we've just performed the finished machining Absolutely. of the part yeah. using the Stephen Shallow machining strategy. Must say it looks like an excellent surface finish. Yeah. But I'd be really happy if I knew it was accurate. Yeah. So I think the real key benefit here that people need to understand is that uh, the Stephen Shallow strategy doesn't only need to be used as a finishing strategy, it can also be used as a semi-finishing strategy. So I agree with you. Let's apply another surface inspection strategy to this and let's see what uh, material we have left on the part. Okay, what do our results look like? Yeah, so really good question. Once again, we've just probed this um, as part of the finishing probing sequence. And we can see that our results are really good. They're really accurate, they're within our tolerance zone. Um, so I'm really happy with the overall result that we're also getting. So this is only not quantifying just that we've got a great surface finishing um, strategy, but it's also quantifying that we've got good, accurate results using this strategy as well. That's great. I've really enjoyed learning about all the benefits that Stephen Shallow are affording me. It's safe, it's efficient, and it gives you a great surface finish. Absolutely, Mark, I agree with you. I think there's a, there's a really superior finish on this part. For those of you that do want more information about this, please look at the description below where there'll be a link to the Fusion Learning Portal for you to access.